So, how many kids do we have here today? I want to hear you. All right, there's face painting over there if you would like to get your face painted. So, enjoy. Our next speaker is Justin Shores. He's lived and worked in South Santa Barbara County since 2001, and he's the co founder of Stand Up Santa Barbara and coordinated this event. Stand Up Santa Barbara is a local action group that facilitates civic engagement in order to raise awareness in local government. When Justin ran for office in 2020, his plan for COVID was to have everyone meet with their primary care physician to discuss individual risk and prevention, especially the elderly and people in poor health who had the highest risk factors. In March 2021, COVID policy affected him personally when his high-risk mother contracted COVID-19 and was sent home without any early treatment because the California Department of Public Health had banned known effective therapies. This caused him to be a very vocal advocate against medical censorship and for medical choice. He's been at the Santa Barbara Unified School District board meetings, calling for an end to the closures, mandates, and regulations since the study in January 21 2021 that showed that students should not be masked and did were not better off in a school setting with masks on and that they should be there in person without masks rather than at home. Now that the grand jury in Santa Barbara has found that there is incalculable damage done to our children because of the COVID policy, he has continued to call for the removal of COVID mandates in our local districts. He believes in informed consent, parental rights, and choice. He is married to Yasmin Shores and has two young children. Please welcome Justin Shores. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, Etherton Realty, for joining us as our local sponsor. Thank you, Unity Project, uh, for your incredible support. Um, Thank you to my wife for working so hard behind the scenes making this happen. Um, and all our donors and volunteers, this is this is a community effort. It really, I'm so blessed that this all happened. I don't even know how it happened, but it's here. And it's because of our community and, you know, we have an amazing thing in Santa Barbara here. So that's, you know, that's why we're here. Um, I want to thank Dr. Malone, especially. He's uh, been so gracious with his time and his connections to come out here. Thank you so much for your generosity. And he's the catalyst that really started the, the rest of the event. So um, thank you to Santa Barbara Parks and Rec for helping us through the permits and getting us so we can do this. They've been amazing. Santa Barbara Parks and Rec, a big shout out. I know they're around. Um, and for the police department for their service, there are police department out there somewhere. <laughs> this is incredible. It's, it's hard to believe this is this is happening. So, um, Santa Santa Barbara uh, started as an outreach committee for a local bipartisan medical freedom group. We participated in three of the six worldwide freedom demonstrations with millions of people from hundreds of other cities and 40 other countries. As one of the event planners, I was able to connect with leaders in Germany, Iran, Japan, Australia, Ireland, Canada, Mexico, and many other countries while planning the biggest freedom protests in world history. All of us had one thing in common. We we're all united for freedom. Our governments all took the crisis of COVID and used it to control people and transfer wealth from the lower and middle classes. We did not plan this today, but today is actually the seventh worldwide demonstration and all over the world. So right now, starting in Australia last night and moving along with the time zones, people have been marching for freedom of speech, movement, choice, assembly, and health all around the world today. So that is the seventh worldwide freedom um, event. I want to recognize all the people around the world who have it worse than us. This pandemic has shown that the real battle is not red versus blue, but political elite versus people. Dr. Malone is up next, and we're so blessed to have him here. 
This event all started with a phone call with, with that Dr. Jill Glasspool Malone answered. When I mentioned Santa Barbara City College, Dr. Malone grabbed the phone and said, City College, I love that place. And then he made this happen. He said, I've, I'll move mountains to make this happen. So, um, <laughs> he has deep connections to our, our beautiful home here. His, his academic history at City College was stellar, and the education that he received there was a critical stepping stone to, to the incredible career he's had since. Santa Barbara City College is, is such an important part of our community, and it's fallen from its place as one of the best community colleges in the nation to a campus that has very few people walking the halls. The pandemic caused over 50% drop in enrollment, and now policies push, uh, pushed by progressive politicians are not allowing a large group of unvaccinated and unfortunately underprivileged, but otherwise healthy people, the opportunity to come back to campus. Santa Barbara City College is where I met my wife. And beyond the education that people can receive, the social aspects of a local city college is the start of so many young families that take root and seek careers or, or start businesses in Santa Barbara. Yay! Yay! This, this publicly funded institution is is being controlled by radical politicians. You're doing good. Hard to see through tears, huh? <laughs> Radical politicians who've decided to shut the door to almost 50% of the already dramatically reduced en enrollment. So it's 50% lower enrollment. They've also shut the door to 50% of those people because they're not vaccinated. Many of the students that are banned from campus are disadvantaged, and this will further increase the achievement gap in Santa Barbara and California overall. This doesn't hurt the board members who create these policies, but it crushes the opportunities for students and staff who think differently or have legitimate reasons for not being vaccinated. COVID policy, policy continues to hurt healthy people, and everyday opportunities are taken from them. This has caused record numbers to consider other places to live and work. Goleta Water District is still requiring their employees that have exemptions to pay for their bi-weekly tests out of their own pockets. This is not a reasonable accommodation for legal exemptions, and it's hurting some amazing families that have no choice but to pay or be fired. Last week, Director Farfalla Bora justified this by saying they didn't they did give employees a choice the choice unpaid leave or to pay for their tests they could be fired or they pay that's their choice last december the grand jury found because of policy during covid 19 pandemic the children of our community have suffered incalculable damage this has affected our disadvantaged children the most Board member Laura Capps, who's now running for a higher office, and Kate Ford have admitted to the local press that they are partners in crime behind the mandates. Trustee Capps mentioned her reason was her own fear after she heard a rumor of an alleged unvaccinated teacher potentially spreading COVID to a student. This was when 85% of the campus was vaccinated already. Um, so it could have been a vaccinated teacher if the odds were the other way. Um, she admittedly had no proof of this because of privacy, and while claiming to follow the recommendations of health professionals, she went above and beyond with harmful policy because of her own fear, not the recommendation of a health official. All of these boards have positions opening in November. Many of these board members are on record making decisions that have hurt healthy, hard-working people in Santa Barbara and caused incalculable damage to our children. Keep remembering those words. How many of you are not okay with that? It's time to get to the table. We need good people to run for office locally, and we need more of you to pr prioritize civic engagement and to help shape the future of California and Santa Barbara. A republic 
requires participation. We are not a spectator government. Growing up in the 80s and 90s in school, we were taught that diversity is our strength. How many have heard that phrase? We're put into boxes by the media and political parties, and instead of focusing on things that we agree on, they want us to focus on our differences. I want us all to leave here with a different thought. Unity is our strength. We are the United States of America, and we may come from diverse backgrounds, but we unite on principles that are timeless under the Constitution. California is a special place, and we need leaders that have integrity and resources to bring sanity back to boardrooms across the state. Both political parties reject outsiders and actively sabotage campaigns of some of the most qualified people who take on the challenge of running for office. America does not need more fundraising experts writing legislation. Our politicians right now are fundraisers. They're not experts in what they do. We need good people to answer the call and take necessary risks to, risks to ensure a better future for our children. What do we do? Where do we start? We start in the boardrooms of Santa Barbara County. If you're a parent, you, you, you need to run or be involved in your children's school board. That's the first thing you can do. Who will run for Goleta City Council? Santa Barbara City Council, or Goleta Water District. Let's bring, these, bring true representation back to our government. Representation that listens to people, not party. Unity is our strength. Thank you. Yay!